Hey, my fellow creeps and creepers, look where we are. It's, it's Monster Toy Corner. That's right. For no particular reason other than I thought you might like to see a different background every now and then. Uh, from different from what you're accustomed to seeing in these segments of what is it the mask fanatic where we look for cool and interesting old Halloween masks and related um, examples of the art of the creation of monsters and other fun things tonight or today today I should say because it's it's Monday morning isn't it yeah it's Monday morning out in the real world uh, today we have one of the um, well, just one of the coolest things in the history of human civilization, I think. One of the, the eighth wonder of the world, maybe. Uh, a little creation by the late, great Harry Inman. And Harry is no longer with us, which is why I used the word late five seconds ago. Uh, and boy, we miss him. The mask world misses Harry so much. He was such a talented guy, and a good guy, too. Very generous, and, um, well, we miss you, Harry. But anyway, one of Harry's many, many... Uh, wonderful creations is this beast based on uh, the premiere episode of what is uh, my favorite uh, old sci-fi television uh, program of all time the original Outer Limits which aired from uh, 1963 through 65 yeah the first episode was called the galaxy being and Harry created this mask of the galaxy being now uh, at least one other uh, version, I think a couple of other versions have been made of this character. Uh, I can think of at least one, I can think of one by the SF Mask Company that uh, came first and that one was nice too and I believe it glowed in the dark but it was a little less accurate uh, as far as looking like the uh, contours and forms of the head of the one on the show. Harry's is much closer and uh, I like it better and I like the way he painted it better as well. Now, uh, Harry was in the process of doing a series of Outer Limits masks, and uh, only ten of these were made. He would just make ten of each one. And at this time, now this, this is, this is going to sound nuts, but wow, this is high quality. He was lining the insides of them with uh, like, like a, a gauze dipped in latex, so when that would dry, these things would be really almost rock hard and almost indestructible and I wish I wish anybody today was still doing that crazily high quality kind of stuff with the latex but uh, that took some patience didn't it folks now uh, the galaxy being as you may notice is uh, is kind of weird even even when compared to modern-day American college students or or Walmart shoppers he still looks a little weird doesn't he why is that? Well, he has these strange dark spots on him. What's that all about? Okay, on the show, the galaxy being is actually made of, of a combination of uh, particles of light and radio waves. He's sort of a transmission who's beamed to Earth uh, by mistake. And he's not made of uh, solid flesh like uh, most of the human beings that you know. Uh, and they achieve this effect of, of something otherworldly and something not right by showing him in reverse negative. What? Well, what I mean is the original uh, suit, it was basically a very dark wetsuit and a head made out of something uh, that, looked, that was dark and shiny. If you imagine uh, a, a mask made out of uh, chocolate pudding or, 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 or liver, some sort of pate uh, substance. Yuck. Imagine a mask made out of... Well, anyway, uh, let's go back to the chocolate pudding. That sounds better. Now I'm going to be hungry for chocolate pudding. Anyway, imagine a mask made out of chocolate pudding, and you might think, yeah, it would look dark and very uh, wet and slick and slimy. Well, it, the, uh, the mask and the costume had uh, sort of a gelatinous, uh, oily stuff put all over them to make them very shiny and reflective. And then, uh, well, when you look at a shiny uh, object, you see white spots uh, all over it that uh, are, are points of light bouncing off of it, uh, off the contours. But of course, if you have a three-dimensional object and, and a light that's in one place and you turn the object, the degree and the angle of light is going to change the whole time. So, uh, you know, our brains aren't used to seeing it that way, but we really see these little white spots that move all over uh, when light shines on any object, especially shining ones. 
So when they showed this in reverse negative, what you got was this very unearthly, otherworldly, weird alien effect of something light instead of dark with dark spots instead of the light spots. So wherever the light was hitting it would register as a dark dot when it was shown in negative. And it had a, a very, you'll pardon the expression, alienating quality to it. And the character was played by um, William O. Douglas, uh, what? Yeah, William O. Douglas Jr., son of a Supreme Court Justice. It's true. And he was great, even though um, uh, it's, it's a little restricting. Obviously, you can't uh, do facial expressions or anything like that as this character. His performance was, was a, a, a pantomime thing, and the miming was wonderful because he really did appear to be alien. He just had a strange way of walking and moving and conducting himself that, that really worked and was really cool and must have, must have scared the pants off of people who saw it on television back in 1963, I would think, because it holds up as being uh, cool and creepy and weird even today. And, uh, well, Harry's mask of the galaxy being uh, has black spots painted on and, and at the time in uh, 2000 when he made this I remember talking to him about it and we were kind of like well I don't know because you know when you watch the show those black spots move around because they're the negative of lights being uh, shined onto the head so if you paint them on they're gonna stay in the same place and it's not gonna be exactly but every every image and every picture you see of this character he has these weird random dark spots on him that seem to keep moving so i think this was the right way to go now making this all the more cool and amazing it's actually uh, painted with glow-in-the-dark paint so stay with me for just a second here and after this uh, brief edit we'll see what he looks like under black light shall we and it's just that easy see i made good on that threat here we are looking at the galaxy being under black light and I think this is a wonderful work of uh, science fiction monster alien and mask art I think this is a, a just a wonderful thing how could you not love this if you like uh, monsters and aliens hmm? and uh, again probably gonna be hard to find if you're actually looking for one because Harry only did uh, did only make ten of them I wonder if I have that flashlight yeah there we go uh, so I can say farewell to you and, uh, well, hope you enjoyed this look at the galaxy being as brought to life by Harry Inman in the year 2000. Wonderful, wonderful uh, piece for the mass collection and a memorable creature for all you sci-fi fans out there in the world of humans. Goodbye.